Hello, world. I'm still terrible at Japanese, even though I've lived in Japan for five years. So, if you're looking for advice on how to succeed at learning, don't look at me. At five years old, my niece had me beat when it came to speaking Japanese, even though I had been in the country for that number of years. Although, not to brag or anything, but I can totally blow her out of the water when it comes to reading kanji. Yep, I'm like a third or fourth grader in that department, just don't ask me to write it. What I have learned to master is failing, so I can provide some good help on what not to do. And despite all my ineptitude, I have found a couple things that have worked for me, which I'll share at the end. But for now, let's talk about why I still suck at Japanese after five years of living in Japan. As an English speaker, Japanese is hard. Let's travel back to a couple years ago. Sucking at Japanese sucked. It was such a downer. Can't read the newspaper to find out that it's hot in the summer. Can't read the ingredients to find out what's in my onigiri. Can't read these magazines. Everything's so blurry. I'd try to study an hour a day, but I still sucked. But it stopped sucking so much once I did a little internet research and discovered that the British had found out the reason for my woes. They estimated that for a foreigner to learn basic English, it would take them 360 hours. I had studied Japanese hours that much, but for Japanese, it was 1,000. Oh, I hadn't studied that much. So that was a kick in the b- the brain. I felt winded for a moment, but once I recovered, I realized I wasn't running a 10k, but instead a marathon. And you know I only made the running analogy so that I could reuse this running footage I labored so hard to capture. I mean, just listen to the panting. So, I was sitting here at my computer trying to find this 1000 hour study to provide evidence for all of you, but I couldn't find it. Instead, what I found is that you need 2200 hours of study to become proficient. Yeah, there are four categories of difficulty. Category 1, languages that are more similar to English and it's 600 to 750 class hours to gain professional working proficiency. Then there's category 2, category 3, and then category 4, 2200 class hours, which they label super hard languages. Languages which are exceptionally difficult for native English speakers. On the one hand, this is great for my ego. I mean, it's not my fault I suck, it takes 2200 hours. Ain't nobody got time for that. Yet, that doesn't change the fact that my Japanese language marathon just got upgraded to ultra. And yes, ultra marathons do exist. They're 100 kilometer affairs that appeal to the running masochists at heart. Now now, I know what you're saying. Hey, Mr. White sounding Mexican guy, you have to read the fine print. Okay, that's true. De acuerdo, eso es verdad. The 1000 hours was to be basic. The 2200 hours was to reach a professional working proficiency. It is assumed that the student has above average aptitude for classroom learning of foreign languages. Lower aptitude language learners will typically take longer. Oh. But come on, what sham source is this 2200 hours of study coming from? It turns out it's from the US Department of State's Foreign Service Institute School of Language Studies, which I like to call the USDSFSISLS. The instructional program reflects 70 years of experience in teaching language to U.S. diplomats. I know there's a lot of fake news in the U.S., as your president so kindly reminds me. And fortunately, we tend to record uh, stories now, so we have it for your enjoyment if you'd like it. But we record when we deal with reporters. It's called fake news. Thank you, Mr. President. So knowing this, I searched harder on the internet and found this guy. And he says I could have been fluent in three months. So I must be doing something wrong because I could have been speaking just like this. Nihon no shumatsu e yokoso. Ni kagetsu kan skype de hanase dake deshita ga kyo wa hajimete ato hajimete nihongo wa Chuck, uh, Chuck this. Now to be fair, he said he didn't get to study the entire three months because he got real sick and then he was busy on his book deal on learning languages in three months. So this is only his two months progress. He was initially aiming for N2 plus on the Japanese language proficiency test, but then he found out it had no spoken component and reasoned it doesn't measure language skills to a good enough level to work for him. But he was still aiming for a B2 plus on the CEFRL scale. 
This would mean that he would have been able to interact with a degree of fluency and spontaneity that makes regular interaction with native speakers quite possible. I think he got pretty close. Hi. So, so me must say, ni ni hongo, ni hongo hanas hito imaska. Ah, okay. So I got a little sidetracked. Where were we? Oh yes. Why is Japanese hard? Let's start with the Japanese writing systems. There are three writing systems: hiragana, katakana, and kanji. Hiragana is not so bad. It has 46 base characters, and the same can be said for katakana. So that's 92 characters to learn versus the 26 in English. So it's only like three times as much. No biggie. And then there's kanji. It's from China, and they've got many thousands of these characters, which are a bit more complicated. But you know what? Despite there being over 50,000 of them, there's a set called Joyo Kanji, or regular Chinese characters that only number 2,136. It only takes a Japanese child until graduating high school to learn them all. But of course, there's a hack for it. It only takes a smart person 97 days. Okay, so it's gotten a little bit shady here. So let me try being straight up for a bit. Japanese grammar is both difficult and not. I'm told it makes much more sense than English grammar. But if you're already a fluent English speaker, Japanese grammar is all backwards. So if in English I wanted to say, "Would you like to eat pizza?" in Japanese I would say, "Anata wa pizza o tabetai desu ka?" which is like, "You pizza eat?" Except Japanese people wouldn't say that. My family would be more like pizza taberu, which is pizza eat. I admire the simplicity, but if it was a waiter asking me, they would say pizza wa ikaga desu ka, which translates to pizza like to have. There's still no you in the sentence because both you and the waiter know who he's talking to, so why say it? But the desu ka is added because that's the polite way to do it, and the waiter is below you. You see, Japanese is very contextual, meaning there's a lot of things you should just know and be aware of, and you need to know how to say things. Honorific speech or keigo fall under three main categories: sonkeigo, respectful language; kenjogo, humble language; and teinego, polite language. I know what you're thinking. What's the difference between respectful, humble, and polite language? You got me. But if you want a crash course in feeling like you're set up to fail the subtleties of the Japanese language, scroll through the Wikipedia page. Be my guest. Be my guest. Because you'll also learn about techogo, courteous language, and bikago, word beautification. And that's not to mention tamego, which means same age language, which is how kids would speak and how you'd talk to those close to you in life, like friends and family. This is the type of language I generally pick up because that's who I talk to most. Shoko, cake wa dou desu ka? Oishii. Oishii? Honto? So when talking with people outside the group, I sound like an impolite, disrespectful, and egotistical child. Speaking of children, by the time a kid is in elementary school, they know about 5,000 words. No wonder why at five, my niece trounced me at speaking Japanese. I probably knew half the words she did. Learning Japanese is two steps forward, one step back. There are things in life where progress doesn't regress, like running a marathon. When you're running, even if you get tired and stop to have a drink of water, you don't end up further from the finish line. You're merely standing still. In fact, once you're refreshed, you'll have more ability to get to that finish line. And there are some skills that don't tend to go away, even if you've learned it a long time ago, like bike riding. You could not ride a bike for a decade and be back in the saddle again in a matter of minutes. I'm back in the saddle again. There are even some languages that you can get basic competency in within a matter of days, like HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language, which you can use to display a basic website. But with the Japanese language, if I stopped studying for a month, I had to review a few previous chapters before I could start off where I left off. Bro, you're doing Japanese wrong. Despite all my talk about how hard it is to learn Japanese, the big elephant in the room is that I suck because I'm doing it wrong. Sure, you can wash greasy dishes with cold water and eventually get the job kind of done. But if I had used a drop of dawn, maybe my language problems would have been gone. I've made so many mistakes, but let me share a few with you today. I didn't properly learn katakana and hiragana right away. Those are the two basic Japanese writing systems. Remember? It's like trying to read English without knowing what some of the letters in the alphabet are. Even though the hiragana syllabary contains 46 monographs and pronunciation is straightforward as it's a phonetic lettering system, unlike English, knight, nigget, knight, 
There are also 21 digraphs, 25 diacritics, and 15 digraphs with diacritics. Now the thing is, you can't get very far with only hiragana and katakana. You also need kanji. Before I used to think, why not get rid of the complicated kanji and stick to a single writing system like hiragana? The problem is that Japanese writing doesn't use spaces, so it's kind of like trying to read this sentence right now. It can be done, but it's kind of hard to read, isn't it? This is what reading hiragana and katakana is like when you're not using kanji. Very hard to read, especially when your lack of vocabulary means you don't know where one word ends and the other starts. <sighs> so yeah, learning kanji is necessary because it makes reading sentences without wanting to tear your eyes out possible. And of course, it's something I've avoided doing for way too long. Unfortunately, like English words, kanji can be read in multiple ways. Making Japanese super, super hard. Japanese is super hard, but like, I like extreme sports, so I thought like, let's make it super, super hard. The best way I found was to avoid making mistakes, especially when speaking. And the best way to do that is to not speak at all. Think about it. If you're gonna kick it up a notch on the difficulty scale, not speaking a language is uh, lit pro tip. Another hundo p way to make language learning super, super hard is to have a brain that's not wired to do so. French and English were my worst subjects in school. In fact, the only course I've ever failed in my entire life was Japanese 102. Whether what that study suggests will be scientifically proven. The fact is, I don't generally enjoy studying languages, whether it's English, French or Japanese. And anyone will tell you it's much harder learning something new when you'd rather be doing something else. Let me give you the down low. Despite everything I've said before, my honest answer for why I still suck at Japanese is because I don't need to be good at it. It's not something I'm proud of. It's just more a matter of what my current reality is. I work from home and it's almost all in English. The most difficult thing I have to deal with in life in Japanese is probably the government or the doctor, and my wife can and does step in to help when needed. Raising bilingual kids is also non-intuitively a detriment to my learning Japanese. I speak to them in English so that they can continue to learn the language. I don't know how to say it, but it's like if you want to put on something on it. That takes two potential language learning partners out of the equation for me. And then there's my wife. You'd think she'd make a great Japanese language learning partner being a native Japanese speaking person and all, but consider this. I'm stuck at home all day, all by my lonesome. I don't talk to anybody else. And so my wife comes home and I just wanna connect. Really, that's, that's what I wanna do. I want to connect and the easiest way for me to do that is in English and that's what we default to. While pondering my terrible Japanese, given the number of years I've lived in Japan, I came up with a list of priorities and it was easy to find out why. Mine were family, work, health, household duties, gotta cut that grease, kids English education, Japanese. But I still want to learn Japanese. I want to understand the country I call home better. I've tried many tools, a lot of them I'd recommend, like JapanesePod101.com, Genki Books, Tai Kim's Grammar Guide, Anki SRS, NHK Easy News, and Rikai-kun. I think they all work when used consistently, but my biggest problem has always been keeping track of my progress and knowing where to start when I've fallen behind. That and fear of failure. Out of all those things, I've managed to stick to two. The first is Wanikani. It helps me recognize and pronounce kanji. I use it because it keeps track of my progress, teaches me in a structured way, and I can do it anywhere at any time as long as I have an internet connection. It doesn't teach you how to write kanji, nor does it teach you how to spontaneously use the words in a conversation. Shoubu. Shoubu. It's not some silver bullet. However, I can now read kanji at the fourth grade level, if I'm being generous with myself. Senior? Now the second is Pimsleur Japanese. The main part of Pimsleur is the graduated interval recall of speaking Japanese. Or in other words, the program gets you to think and speak in Japanese in a manner that lets you remember stuff. Your neighbor says he said he'll be arriving at 3:30. Sanji han ni tsuku toimashita. Sanji han ni tsuku toimashita. What it's helped me with the most is getting over my fear of speaking, as it makes me do it over and over and over. 
You say that the daughter lives in Kyoto. 娘は京都に住んでいます。娘は京都に住んでいます。Even if I get it wrong half the time. A tip I learned about Pimsleur is that they have their lessons on Audible because Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet. This let me fill my summer with learning Japanese. Like how I slid right into mentioning Audible, which is the sponsor of this video? Yeah, you can go to audible.com slash life where I'm from or text life where I'm from to 500 500 to get started. I've actually had an Audible subscription for many years now and was quite excited that they would be my first video sponsor. Audible wants you to know that you can listen to them while doing summary things, like running or enjoying a sunset by the beach. I prefer listening to Audible while doing dishes, but whatever floats your boat. Amazon Prime members can get Audible for $4.95 a month for the first three months. That's like getting three months for the price of one. After that, it's only $14.95 a month. This offer ends July 31st, 2018. And so, the interesting thing about the Audible price is that with the Pimsleur Japanese audiobooks, it actually turns out to be cheaper to go through Audible than directly through Pimsleur. That's because the Audible subscription lets you get any book for your monthly credit, regardless of length or price. So, go to audible.com slash life where I'm from or text life where I'm from to 500 500 to get started. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. How's your language learning quest going?